Hello, my name is David and today I'm going to be talking about a quick use case demonstration of Microsoft Office 365 and how it can be used amongst a number of different people to both communicate and collaborate with each other. Here I have two separate users that both have live and active Office 365 subscriptions and they're working for the same company. The first user is going to be Michael and the second user is going to be Jane. Michael and Jane are both salespeople and um, they're just fictitious users but they're both salespeople and uh, for the purposes of this demonstration um, the challenge is going to be that they both only have access to a web browser um, and they're going to need to communicate with each other about editing a sales presentation ahead of a scheduled sales meeting and uh, they're going to be wanna, uh, they're going to want to be working on that sales presentation together. Um, and the sales presentation is of course in Microsoft PowerPoint. Alright, so let's get this um, uh, use case scenario started. I'm going to go ahead and log in as Michael first. And I'm going to log in as Jane as well. <clears throat> so Michael is logged in using uh, Mozilla Firefox and uh, Jane is logged in using Google Chrome and um, by default when they both log into Office 365 they're taken to um, their email which is um, powered by Outlook Web App. Outlook Web App looks very similar to Microsoft Outlook 2013 and um, has a similar look and feel as far as communication via email is concerned so they can use this uh, part of Office 365 to email each other and communicate with each other and communicate with external parties uh, as far as email is concerned. Of course they can also use their devices via ActiveSync but this is sometimes a nice um, way to communicate when you're on the road. And in addition to being able to communicate with, with each other via email um, as you can see, once you sign in to Office 365 as an active user, you're automatically also signed into uh, Microsoft Link, which is part of Office 365 and is the instant message and conferencing component of Office 365. If you had the full-fledged version of Link installed on your device or on your computer, you could also use Microsoft Link to video conference and telephone uh, with other employees. But as part of the browser-only version of Link, instant message uh, capabilities are the only thing that we're going to be able to do. So if Jane wanted to communicate with uh, Michael or someone else or um, uh, uh, another employee, uh, within the firm that also had a Office 365 implementation, she could just click their account or their username within her version of the browser and then click the chat icon to fire up a chat message and uh, then she could just start chatting with Michael or another employee using um, Link. So I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, you know, Jane wants to initiate contact with Michael by editing a sales presentation. So she's going to tell uh, Michael that she's going to upload a uh, team pre uh, uh, sales presentation to the team site where they both have access to. The team site is going to be powered by SharePoint which is also part of Office 365 and um, she's letting Michael know that she's going to be doing this via link and an uh, instant message. Alright, so that uh, we've demoed the instant message capabilities. Now let's go ahead and as Jane log into sites, we'll go ahead and open that in a separate tab so we can still use email. And we're going to go ahead and click on the demo site. And this is a site that I've previously set up for both Jane and Michael as the administrator of Office 365. And uh, by default, the site has a document repository which contains a number of different files that they've already uploaded. Um, or some other user has uploaded for them and uh, they can now start collaborating on these files together so if she wanted to go ahead and work on this expense report with Michael she could open it and he could open it and they could work on that together if she wanted to work on a new document that doesn't exist yet in this part of the uh, in this team site she could go ahead and just drag and drop the document from her computer into the team site and that action 
um, would just upload the document to the team site and uh, then she could go ahead and collaborate on that document with other users. So she's going to go ahead and open that up. By default, clicking a document inside any Microsoft Office document inside a team site or within SharePoint is going to open a document for viewing only. If you want to then modify the document, you have a couple of choices. You can click Edit Presentation in this case and choose whether or not you want to edit the document in full PowerPoint that may or may not be installed on your, brow uh, on your computer that is hosting the browser. Um, or you may just edit it in PowerPoint Online, which will only utilize your browser to ed edit and make changes to that document. <clears throat> Alright, so she's going to go ahead and open the document in PowerPoint online and uh, then make some changes to the document. So she can now go ahead and look at the presentation, uh, decide, you know, um, if she wants to add any uh, further information. And um, as soon as she makes those changes, um, they are actually saved to the document. She doesn't have to click save. Um, just making those changes actually saves the document and the changes that she's made to the document. All right, now let's say Michael wanted to go ahead and make changes to the document as well. Um, he's going to go ahead and open sites in a new tab as well. Um, click on the demo site and then the documents repository and open that same document that she's already uploaded. Jane. And then once again he's going to go ahead and edit that presentation in his browser. Now once that document is open for editing, he's going to notice that um, Jane is also editing the file. So she's go he's, going to, he's going to notice right away that someone else is editing this file. And within a few seconds here, uh, Jane is going to be notified that uh, someone else has started editing this file as well. So that way, both users can be editing a file and both users are aware that others are modifying the file at the same time. With PowerPoint, this can take a moment sometimes uh, based on you know, how good your connection is to the server and uh, you know, bandwidth. But eventually what will happen is that each user will see how many others or a list of other users that are currently editing that file. And each user is going to have a color that is going to indicate, be indicative of what area of the document that particular user is working on. So you can see here that Jane is currently editing slide 3. And uh, when Jane is looking at the document, she can see that Michael is editing slide 2. So Michael can make some changes here on slide 2. And um, when he makes that change, <clears throat> Jane can click on that slide and view the information pop up on her screen um, as he's making that uh, as he's making those changes. So that really is um, all there is to it. Um, as I said, uh, some of the propagation of changes as people are making them can take some time based on your bandwidth and, and how fast everyone is connected to the SharePoint server. But the functionality works just like it does in uh, Google Apps um, and Google Docs. Alright, once again, to exit the uh, document um, and save changes, users just exit the document. The saving of changes is automatic. One additional thing that's kind of built into Office 365 and SharePoint is version control. So the user can actually click on a document and look at its version history and see who has been making changes to that document. But in addition to seeing who has been changing the document, they're also able to restore um, different versions of a document in different points in time. So if, um, you know, Michael was looking at this document and thought that Jane maybe messed it up and deleted half the content accidentally. He can go uh, to a previous date when Jane edited that document and restore that version of the document if he so chooses. So it's another cool feature that's part of Office 365, OneDrive or um, SharePoint. All right, so that's really all there is to it as far as document collaboration is concerned uh, using Microsoft Office 365 and um, Office Online. And um, this kind of concludes the demonstration of users being able to collaborate and communicate um, with one another 
and uh, work together on documents. If you have any questions, just drop me a line. Thanks.